Reasons Greetings. Welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm Dan Barker. On today's program, we're going to talk about the winter solstice, which is the real reason for the season. And let me add my warm greetings of the winter solstice season. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. Dan and I are co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of freethinkers, atheists and agnostics, and we work to keep state and church separate. And we hope you'll join us in our work so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail. And speaking of entanglements between religion and government, tis the season. Many state church violations are keeping FFRF and our nine constitutional attorneys very busy. We'll be talking about some of the perennial controversies over state church watch, our state church watchdog deals with during the month of December. But before that, we want to talk about the real reason for the season. So on today's program, it's away with the manger and in with the solstice. For a fact, the Christians stole Christmas. And we don't mind sharing the season with them, but we don't like their pretense that it is the birthday of Jesus. It is the birthday of the unconquered son, Deus Natalis Invicti Solis. Christmas is a relic of sun worship. The best known winter solstice custom was the Roman festival of Saturnalia. It took place for a full week. Saturnalia celebrations, they featured role reversals for masters and slaves, feasting, drinking, bonfires, family parties, gift giving, does it sound familiar? And decorating with evergreens and candles. For almost all festivals that we celebrate, there were corresponding pagan festivals tied to natural events. We've been celebrating the winter solstice, this natural holiday, long before Christians crashed the party for millennia. Our ancestors in the Northern Hemisphere have greeted this seasonal event with festivals of light, gift exchanges, and social gatherings. The winter solstice occurs around December 21st to 22nd every year, and it heralds the symbolic rebirth of the sun, the lengthening of days, and the natural new year. The evergreens displayed now, as in centuries past, flourish when all else seems dead, and their symbols, as is the returning sun, of enduring life. In celebrating the winter solstice, we celebrate reality. The winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere is commonly known as the first day of winter. The winter solstice is the shortest, darkest day of the year, and it's actually an astronomical event. The word solstice comes from the Latin. It starts with the word sol, which means sun, and then ends with the word stis, which in Latin means to stand. So the sun was standing still. During the winter solstice, the sun appears to stand still for a day or two in its southerly drift. The winter solstice is the moment when the sun appears at its most extreme southernmost position from the equator creating the year's longest night. And then the sun appears to turn back around, prompting the celebration, the return of the sun and the start of the new year. So Dan, how did this very natural event of the winter solstice turn into a Christian celebration uh, of the supposed miraculous birth of their God? And uh, it seems um, strange that many Christians don't realize that they're really engaging in pagan revelry. Nothing in the New Testament refers to the nativity as occurring in the wintertime. In fact, the New Testament reference to while shepherds watched their flocks at night meant that Jesus would have likely been born in the early spring or in the fall. The word Christmas does not even appear in the New Testament. But the Christian church wanted to supplant the competing pagan beliefs, which remain entrenched. So it was kind of a case of, if you can't beat them, then join them. The Christian church put the supposed birth of its founder at the time of this pivotal, 
pagan festival. So you could look at it as a pretty shrewd marketing ploy, couldn't you, uh, to transfer the devotion of the heathen uh, to the, from the sun, S-U-N, to the Christian son of God, S-O-N. S-O-N. Christianity wasn't the only religion, of course, to claim December 25th as the date their gods were born. Other such gods of the past include Marduk, Osiris, Horus, Isis, Mithras, Saturn, Saul, Apollo, Serapis, and Dan, you can pronounce this last one. Huitzilopochtli is the name. And uh, what today is known as the Christmas tree, of course, has pagan roots, and that's kind of a pun, I guess. The early Germanic peoples, Celts and Druids, were among many ancient so-called heathens to engage in various forms of tree worship. Many Northern Europeans used evergreens as winter decorations, including the Vikings, and the Old Testament, in fact, warns people not to engage in such idolatry. There's a verse in the Old Testament. It's in Jeremiah 10, verses 2 through 5, which warns, Learn not the way of the heathen, their customs are vain, for one cuts a tree out of the forest. They deck it with silver and with gold. This biblical admonition notwithstanding, most Christians today put up Christmas trees. They cut a tree out of the forest and they decorate it without realizing they are continuing an ancient pre-Christian tradition. What is now the ubiquitous American practice of placing a decorated tree in one's home was popularized here and in England in the 19th century by Germans, such as Queen Victoria's husband. The obvious pagan origins of Christmas revelry and customs were why the Puritans outlawed any observance of December 25th other than a church service. So in celebrating the winter solstice, we are celebrating a natural event something that belongs to and affects everyone in the Northern Hemisphere. The season belongs to all of us. Coming up next, we hear a lot of phony talk about the so-called War on Christmas. Well, there's really a war on the principle of separation between government and religion in December. We'll be right back after the break to talk with FFRF's staff attorney, Patrick Elliott about what the courts have said about the legality of Christian displays on public property. Then we'll spread a little secular cheer at this time of year. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics, working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Please support the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. My name is Jarvis, and I'm an out-of-the-closet atheist. There are many reasons why I'm an atheist, but I'll start with the crudest explanation. I'm sure many of you have seen Clash of the Titans or The Immortals or 300, these blockbuster films about ancient Greek or Roman religion, which we now call mythology. But back then it wasn't mythology. It was very real for them. They genuinely believed that you had to put a coin in a person's mouth before they were buried so that they could pay for the literal ferry to the afterlife. Just as many people today believe that they should eat crackers and wine on a Sunday or that God wants women to hide their bodies under black burqas. Every religion that has ever existed, and there are many, have all believed that they were right, that their rituals and rules and beliefs were 100% correct. And they all thought they nailed it. But where are they today? Uh, if they're not completely forgotten, they're on the silver screen, amusing us with their sword fights, animal sacrifices, and oracles. The religions of today are the entertainment of tomorrow. Everyone, I hope, is an atheist about Zeus and Apollo, Juno and Poseidon. I just added Jesus and Muhammad to that list. Today on Feed That Matters, we're taking a look at the real reason for the season, the winter solstice, whose festivities celebrating winter, enduring life, and the natural new year 
far preceded Christianity. And we've promised to take a look, not at that so-called war on Christmas, but at that actual war that's happening against the constitutional separation of church and state every December. Unfortunately, there are all too many First Amendment violations with the government actively promoting religion in December, especially one religion's teachings. Earlier today, we sat down with Patrick Elliott, who is FFRF's senior counsel and one of FFRF's nine constitutional attorneys, and asked him about what the courts have said about nativity scenes and menorahs on public property. We received many reports in December at the Freedom From Religion Foundation about religious displays on government property, in government buildings, and in city parks. Let's take a look at what the courts have said about these displays. The first case was Lynch versus Donnelly. There, the city of Pawtucket, Rhode Island, included a nativity scene as part of an overall elaborate Christmas display on the grounds of a private park. The city's display included a depiction of Santa, reindeer, and other figurines in addition to the nativity scene. In a 5-4 to four ruling, the Supreme Court held that the city's display did not violate the Establishment Clause. Several years later, however, the court heard another case involving holiday displays. In County of Allegheny versus ACLU, the Supreme Court considered whether two recurring holiday displays on government property were constitutional. The first display consisted of a creche, which was prominently displayed on the grand staircase of the courthouse. The second display, located outside of the city-county building, included a menorah, a Christmas tree, and a sign celebrating the holiday season. The court held that while the menorah display with the Christmas tree and sign was constitutional, it ruled that the nativity scene inside the courthouse was unconstitutional. When analyzing holiday displays, courts will look at the physical setting, the particular symbols used, and whether the overall message endorses religion. Let's take a look at a complaint that FFRF successfully resolved regarding nativity display. We'll head about 40 miles south of Madison to the small town of Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Elkhorn is a town of about 10,000 people. In December, the town's merchants deploy their holiday decorations. The town even calls itself the Christmas card town. Courts have allowed displays on government property that are secular, such as holiday decorations, including something like a Santa's workshop behind me here, Christmas lights, and those types of displays. Uh, what's not permitted would be a government's focus on a purely religious symbol, such as a menorah or a nativity scene as the sole focus of a display. And it was a nativity scene in Elkhorn that caught the attention of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. In 2014, FFRF contacted local government leaders about a nativity scene on the government square. Ultimately, the county agreed to move the nativity display here on government property to across the street at St. Patrick's Catholic Church. This is the crash that was on government property. Today, it's on private property. Um, you'll see we're not able to peek inside because it's got frost on this cold Wisconsin day. Uh, but trust us, it's a typical nativity scene with Jesus, Mary, Joseph, and Christmas figurines. So if you're the government, you can put up Frosty and his family anywhere you want. But when it comes to religious displays, leave those to your local churches. So the law on nativity scenes and menorahs on public property can be a little bit confusing. But uh, there is one area of the law that is clear, and that is, if the government creates a public forum for displays in December, it can't discriminate. We at the Freedom From Religion Foundation have successfully sued, and in several instances when nativity scenes or angels were permitted in a public park, but our signs or displays were censored. The Freedom From Religion Foundation and our 32,000 plus members around the country are very busy making sure that our point of view is represented. When local or state governments declare that there's a public forum, for example, in December on public property, but typically only Christian major scenes or religious images are seen. We like to make sure that if religion is displayed, then the views of the non-religious are also present. We've been ensuring that our point of view is represented at the Wisconsin State Capitol for more than 30 years now. It's December in Wisconsin, which means it's time for the holiday tree in the state capitol. For many years, religious groups have been allowed to put up seasonal displays in the rotunda. 
In that same spirit, the Freedom From Religion Foundation exercises their right to free expression during this season of the winter solstice. Annie Laurie Gaylor is the group's co-president. And this is the 22nd year that the Freedom From Religion Foundation has put up our sign saying there are no gods, there's only the natural world. This was composed as a equal time protest of religion in the state capital here in Wisconsin. And it says, at this season of the winter solstice may reason prevail. There are no gods, no devils, no angels, no heaven or hell. There is only our natural world. Religion is but myth and superstition that hardens hearts and enslaves minds. There's been a lot of problems with it over the years where it's been stolen or uh, had acid thrown on it, but in recent years it's not been molested. And then we recently uh, joined that sign with our Bill of Rights Nativity. And this is a very charming and whimsical homage to the Bill of Rights which was adopted on December 15, 1791. So it's the anniversary of the Bill of Rights in the month of December. And we think it's appropriate to honor the Bill of Rights in December, whereas it's not appropriate to have religion at the seat of our state government. And this sign depicts some of the Founding Fathers and the Statue of Liberty honoring the Bill of Rights, which is depicted in a crash. And this has been somewhat controversial. It was at the state capitol in Texas and Governor Abbott censored it, even though he had a permit, and we just won a lawsuit where a federal judge said he may not censor it, but uh, Governor Abbott has appealed that. We have this in several other state capitals. It's on courthouse lawns, and we make this Bill of Rights Nativity available to secular activists who want to counter religion at so-called public forums on government property in the month of December. We don't think religion or irreligion belongs in governmental property, it's divisive. But the, if there's going to be religion on government property, there has to be room at the inn for dissenting points of view. All over the nation, not just in Wisconsin, we're seeing non-believers, atheists, and agnostics erect banners and other displays, some tongue-in-cheek, such as the flying spaghetti monster or festivist poles, on governmental property where Christian manger scenes, angels, or other religious messages are put up in December. Free thinkers are putting up these banners, our Bill of Rights Nativity, and other signs in county parks, at city halls, in county courthouses, and in state capitals all around the nation. The nuns, meaning those with no religion, spelled N-O-N-E-S, not N-U-N-S, the nuns today represent a quarter of the U.S. population and about a third of millennials and the upcoming Generation Z. That's a lot of Americans to exclude when government impermissibly takes sides in religion. The public square belongs to all of us. And if government is going to create a forum for religion, there must also be room for the rest of us, including for non-religious views. The 19th century's most famous infidel, who was Robert Greene Ingersoll, famously wrote a Christmas sermon. It was published in the Evening Telegram, December 19th, 1891. And Dan, I thought you could read a little of it. Robert Ingersoll wrote that the good part of Christmas is not always Christian. It is generally pagan, that is to say, human, natural. Long before Christ was born, the sun god triumphed over the powers of darkness. About the time that we call Christmas, the days begin perceptibly to lengthen. Our barbarian ancestors were worshipers of the sun, and they celebrated his victory over the hosts of night. Such a festival was natural and beautiful. The most natural of all religions is the worship of the sun. Christianity adopted this festival. It borrowed from the pagans the best it has. The customs of this time of year endure because they're pleasant. We all enjoy hearing from distant family, from friends to gather, to feast, to sing. Gifts, as Robert Ingersoll once said, are evidences of friendship, of remembrance, of love. We non-believers are quite willing to celebrate the fun parts of anybody's holidays, 
We just want to be spared the smolts, the superstition, and the state church entanglements. Now, Christians have often borrowed from secular music, such as the ballad Green Sleeves, which they turned into the Christian hymn, What Child Is This? So Dan has borrowed from a Christian hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and turned it into a song called Solstice Tribute. Here's Dan. O shining star of solstice time, your radiant hours are few. You turn and strike the New Year's chime. We owe our lives to you. These darkest days of winter, we miss your warming rays. But every year this hemisphere returns to brighter days. Since olden days, the human race has feared your warmth would die. The evergreen is ever seen as hope we will survive. Oh, ancient drums, stop beating and superstitions fall. It's time for reasons, greetings, for peace, goodwill to all. The Freedom From Religion Foundation always has an annual winter solstice party. For our members in the Madison, Wisconsin area, we have tasty treats, music, and a short program. And at one of those concerts, the very talented local singer, Susan Hofer, joined us. So let's go out of our winter solstice show by listening to Susan Hofer singing, What Are You Doing New Year's Eve? Which, by the way, was written by the non-believing Frank Lesser. And, Merry Winter Solstice, and thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters. When the bells all ring and the horns all blow And the couples we know are fondly kissing Will I be with you or will I be among the missing? Maybe it's much too early in the game oh, But I thought I'd ask you just the same What are you doing New Year's? New Year's Eve Maybe it's just Someone's gonna hold you tight When it's exactly 12 at night Welcoming in the new year's New year's eve Maybe I'm crazy to I'd ever be the one you chose Out of a thousand invitations you'll receive Up in case I stand one little chance Here comes the jack Question in advance What are you doing New Year's New Year's
I'd ever be the one you chose Out of a thousand invitations you But in case I stand one little chance, here comes the jackpot.